be here to talk about issues that are important to the entire state. So there's been a lot of questions raised about the Center for Investigative Journalism item. Can each of you address um, whether that is going to stay in the budget given the concerns raised by a number of different people? Well, I mean, I guess I can speak for the governor, but the fact that we uh, had uh, supported it going into the budget, I think, uh, speaks from our, our perception where it should be. Our goal is to have no changes made to the budget. Uh, I can't speak for all of my colleagues. Uh, my hope is that the Assembly Republican Caucus will pass the budget as it came out of the joint finance process. As Representative Nigrin said, we can't speak for the governor. Uh, but certainly, I think that a case can be made uh, that this organization, albeit <coughs> Bill is here, you know, uh, albeit one um, that has created a unique relationship with the university, is one that members in our caucus have raised concerns about the propriety of having a news gathering organization, right, left, center, whatever, have the imprimatur of the university and the state on it. We just think that the separation of church and state is kind of one of those that we understand, and the separation of the press and the state should be one we follow as well. Where have these concerns been raised prior to you know, 5 o'clock on Wednesday morning? So they were raised in inside our caucus, and members offer uh, amendments throughout the entire process, and that's why it went through the finance process. They had the discussion. Republicans unanimously listened to the concerns of those members and agreed. Who, who proposed it initially? Uh, well, the process as we go through is not one where we say individual legislators uh, have their name identified with it. Republicans talked about it. Many people, I shouldn't say many, I don't know how many, uh, but a number of people brought up the concerns. Uh, and that's why I went forward. All, all 60 members on our side of the Senate as well, they had the opportunity to make motions to the budget. Senator Darling made the comment this morning that it was not because this was a liberal organization. She went so far as to say that she believes any such arrangement with a nonprofit on the UW campuses should not be allowed. Do you agree with that? I, I do. I would, I would suggest that any, I, I think it makes it more difficult for the, any news organization to be independent when you're getting uh, what could be perceived, and I, I believe, is uh, state facilities uh, subsidized by the taxpayer. So, yeah. But she's not limited to journalism. She's saying any arrangements with well, nonprofits. I can't speak to the vast majority or vast uh, number of opportunities that may be taking place, but if you have specifics, I guess we could talk about those. If, if you feel that way, what, what about Wisconsin Public Television and Wisconsin Public Radio? Why give them state money? Why allow them to operate in Vitals Hall? Well, I, go ahead. I mean, there's there's other organizations that are very similar to the Center for Investigative Journalism. Should we be giving them the same uh, advantages as well? I mean, the uh, Wisconsin Public Te Television, Wisconsin Public Radio are unique entities. There, I don't believe that there's others that are competing with them. Should it matter that the center provides a service that the university finds valuable for its institution and its students and wants to pre preserve? That's a decision they made. That's a decision they made. We, we believe otherwise, and that's why we made the decision we did. You've talked a lot about the importance of um, having a transparent assembly. Why then won't you tell us who is the primary backer of this? Who initially proposed this? Well, I'd have to go back and actually think about it because as our process goes forward, members, uh, we have a vigorous discussion on all kinds of different topics. Many times it's more than one person who says, uh, I support that idea, I support that concept. Um, I think that's part of the reason that we go forward. It's not something uh, where we have a committee that proposes a single amendment. You all know the process that joint finance uses. It's the process that's been done under Democrats and Republicans. It's no different uh, and all this. It's just going in the same direction. Do you worry that it does open the door towards more legislative oversight? What types of nonprofit operations can and cannot function on a daily campus? They can still operate. I mean, I guess but, I mean, in these types of arrangements. Well, I do think that it's the taxpayers. Taxpayers provide the resources for the university system. I think it's a legitimate function for the state legislature as representatives of the people to say whether or not the university uh, should be creating arrangements that some in the public uh, might perceive to be helping one uh, organization or another uh, without giving the same access. Uh, the university didn't go through an RFP process. They didn't have a transparent process. They didn't say, let any organization apply and we'll choose that which is best. They had the same, I guess, process that in some ways we utilized. They had individuals who said, we like this idea. They brought it forward. They never had public hearings. They never had an opportunity to let individuals apply. Uh, so I think that as we go through this, we want to set a policy standard which is that there should be separation uh, to make sure that no organization receives undue subsidies. So how is this a budget issue, though? It seems more policy. 
Well, I mean, everything that goes in the budget. I mean, as you know, some are directly related to the impact on the state's bottom line. Some are directly related to uh, the way the taxpayers are treated. And some are indirect. Uh, the resources that go from the university are taxpayer dollars. Uh, so having us do something in the budget that deals with taxpayer dollars is certainly within our purview. Charlie Sykes called this vindictive. How do you respond to that? Well, Charlie and I are good friends, but as you might know, we don't always see eye to eye. Uh, did you notice there was no long pause there? Um, so uh, we definitely have things that we agree on. We have things that we might not. Uh, well, and might another, talk, another talk radio is talking positively about us, so we don't make our decisions based on what the talk radio folks are going to say. Yes, we're going to start the session. We're already five minutes late. Thank you. You can Thanks ask additional, additional questions one-on-one. Did they hear the You know what? I can't even hear that. Yeah,